In today's video, we're going to learn about the while loop and how it works in Rust. Previously, we learned that with the loop keyword, we could create a loop that only stopped when we explicitly told it to do so. The while loop behaves slightly differently. It requires a condition that evaluates to true for each iteration to continue the loop. Once that condition evaluates to false, the loop exits. So let's take a look at an example. So what I'm going to do here is create a variable called number and I will give it the value of five. Now, while the number is greater than zero, we want this to loop. And right now, if we were just to print that number, so if we were to insert the number and run this script, you'll notice that we will get back an infinite loop because this condition never evaluates to false. So once again, we're going to have to hold control plus C to stop our program. And that's why it's important to provide a condition that can eventually evaluate to false. So here to make sure we achieve that, we're going to add number minus equals one for each iteration. And with that, once we run our program, you'll notice that it will count down from five all the way to zero. And once it hits zero, it is no longer greater than zero. So this evaluates to false, allowing us to exit out of the while loop which means we can continue with whatever code is below it. And just to demonstrate that, we can type in loop finished. And then we will run it once again, and you'll see that once we finish our loop, it manages to reach this code. And this can really be any condition you want. You can even insert while true, and that will work just fine. I mean, fine is an exaggeration, it kind of destroyed our program, but as long as this is a condition that evaluates to either true or false, it's going to run. But let's create one more example because I also want to introduce the continue keyword. So next we're going to create another mutable variable called n, which will be set to 20 initially, or that was actually supposed to be 10. And while n is greater than zero, we're going to do the following. We're going to decrement n, so we don't end up with an infinite loop. And then we're going to check if n is equal to five, we will print that we are skipping five. And this is where we will use the continue keyword. And right below that, we're going to print the current value, which is n to the console. So before I explain what continue does, I'm going to run this program. And what you should notice is that it starts to count from nine, it goes down to five, and once it encounters five, it skips five. As you can see, we're not printing that n equals five anywhere. And then it moves on to n equals four, three, all the way down to zero. So what's happening here is we're looping through this, we're decrementing the number on each iteration. And once n is equal to five, we decide to skip the rest of the code using continue. So continue is used to skip to the next iteration directly. This means that all of the code that comes underneath it will not be executed. It literally just goes straight back to the top as soon as this is encountered. And we can also use this to only print even numbers or odd numbers just by changing the implementation details slightly. For example, we can type in if n modulus operator two is equal to zero, then we will continue. We will skip printing the even numbers, or at least that's what I think it will do. And just like that, we will end up with odd numbers only because the continue keyword told Rust to skip to the next iteration each time we encountered an even number. 